and uh, this is Randy Carlson, and we are here to talk about IoT. But we are not going to talk about the normal tech stuff, right, that you are coming here for. We are not going to talk about the software or the hardware or what is the tech that we normally talk about here. We are, all, we are going to talk about... <laughs> check one, two, check, check. Okay. We are going to talk about what does it take to roll out IoT in a big corporation and what our experience has been for the last year and a half, right? Making the software work and making the hardware work is the easier pass, easy, e easier part of the whole equation because we have got fabulous guys like Randy who work in Starbucks technology. I am the other end of the equation. You know, when you say Internet of Things, he's the Internet, I am the thing. Okay, <laughs> so my group puts all this equipment in the stores that delivers the food or beverage. Okay, starting off, flip this first slide. So why is IoT important? The first proof of why IoT is important is, you know, you can see it for yourself. Go grab a cup of coffee that is being served here and then walk over to the IoT booth, to the Starbucks booth, there is a machine there which serves coffee. Try the coffee here and coffee there. And you'll see the difference. Okay. And the reason is the machine there in the booth is actually connected to our servers. It has the latest recipes and you'll see how much difference recipe makes in the taste of coffee. Right? And that is what IoT is about. It is about giving you the best food or beverage when you walk into a Starbucks every morning without pushing in a lot of tech to our partners in the store who are very focused on serving you and giving you the best food or beverage experience. Now, coming to the numbers, right? The first thing is that uh, we have a lot of stores, okay? And we have a lot of equipment in the stores. And I'll cover how many stores, how many pieces of equipment in the store in the next slide. What happens is, that every time there is a problem with one of the pieces of equipment where we can't serve the customer, the barista in the store or our partner in the store picks up a phone and calls a 1-800 number. And they call the 1-800 number, we roll a truck. Okay. And what we have found is that about 10 to 15% of truck rolls have no problem at all with the machine. So just think, I'll do a, I'll do a simple math on the next slide. A lot of stores, a lot of machines, and if 15% of the calls have no problem, then we shouldn't roll a truck. So the first business case for IoT is I don't have to roll a truck. Second is, coming back to the case I told you one, when you go and taste that coffee out there, you realize that recipes are very important. And we base our food and beverages based on agricultural products, right? So every year the crop is different. The, the blend that we do for coffee is a little different, which means we have to send out recipes to all our machines and all our stores. Coffee recipes, sandwich recipes, even our blenders, right? You see our blenders in our stores? They all have specific programs for every Frappuccino you, you, you order, there's a different recipe on the, on the blender. So every year, we are sending out these recipes to all our stores, right? And when you look at the scale at which we are and the machines which we have, that is where IoT makes a big, 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 big impact. Randy, data analytics. Yeah, we can talk about data analytics. So part of what Venkat's talking about is, you know, the real-time experience in the store, but there's also a lot of data that we gather uh, for longer-term analytics. So we can do the preventive maintenance side of the house, we can take a look at uh, you know heartbeat trends to make sure that we're still getting connected across all of our uh, all of our stores at 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 all times. Um, we can take a look at geography and take a look at whether certain geographies are having problems or certain geographies are getting different data. Um, and and overall, it just gives us the ability to do longer term analytics, seasonal uh, analytics, and and capture all that data and do something interesting with it. Something for you to carry away from this, uh, from this uh, uh, session. This is the first project which, where we did 
where we rolled out in Starbucks, uh, you know, where the equipment engineering team that I had and the Starbucks technology team did, where we really didn't do a lot of financial analysis. We didn't go to these finance people and say whether it makes sense or not, because what we figured is the total cost of rolling out IoT on a single machine, if we save a single call during the life of the machine, and our average life of the machine is about seven to eight years, that is how long the equipment is. If we save one call, one truck load, one truck roll, it pays back for the entire cost of IoT deployment over the seven to eight years life of the machine. That is the main reason why we are doing IoT, because the benefits are too many, the cost is insignificant, but the key is how do you do it? Go to the next slide. Well, we got two more things here to talk okay. about. They're just not there, they're in white. They're okay. transparent to you. <laughs> um, so one of the other things is the, is the customer experience. We're, Starbucks is all about the customer experience, about, about spending the time to make each uh, interaction, uh, a personalized interaction with, with our customers, and the ability to be, actually know what's going on with our machines and be able to reactively, and, and in a lot of cases proactively, know when we've got problems, allows us to actually do something before it impacts the store. So uh, in, in before a connected world, a Mastrana might die, and we wouldn't know it unless the partners called up, but they're busy trying to do customer interactions. Now we can actually get in there, Note that there's going to be a problem, get somebody sent out, and, and we can you know, create more customer experiences that way. Oh, how is there they are. Look okay. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties here. Okay. So now the slide is turning out okay. Now, so when uh, Microsoft announced Azure, uh, the Azure Sphere, it was sometime in March last year. Okay, the first development board was available in August. Okay, the day that board was available, we were the first guys to get it. And I'll tell you the reason why we were the first guys to get it, because it made a lot of sense for us. Why does it make sense? If you look at this chart, right? So think about it. Starbucks, 30,000 stores worldwide, okay? We are in 85 countries. Okay, there are about 15 pieces of equipment in each store. When you walk into a Starbucks, order a food or beverage, you're touching one of these 15 pieces of equipment. Plus, we are deploying about 15 to 20 sensors in each stores for different things, right? We have to work with, work and integrate 200 plus suppliers. So, one side is the internet, the other side is a the thing. There are 200 more things that we have to connect to the internet. And each store comes with a unique networking characteristics. Because if you look at it, we have 500 plus relationships, right? You see a Starbucks in a Target, you see a tar Starbucks in the airport, you see a Starbucks in Korea, you go to Peru, you see a Starbucks. All those Starbucks serve the same food or beverage, they come under the same brand, but we have different business relationships to enable those st Starbucks. When there is a different business relationship, that means we are dealing with another IT organization, there is a different Wi-Fi network that Randy has to deal with. There is a separate security audit that Randy has to deal with. And so that is where the complexity starts. So it's much beyond taking the Sphere dev kit, making it work, connecting it to a machine, sending the data. That is just 1%. And that we got done within a week of the Azure Sphere uh, getting rolled out. The moment we got a dev kit, within a week we, were, we had that running. And we are still here, we are still deploying. As of today, we are going to start deploying. We have a, a connected Mastrana 2 in roughly about 50 to 60 stores. And we're going to deploy throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, the, the easy part is the, is the first one. It's the 10,000th one, the 30,000th one. When you talk about the networking characteristics, we have stores that have only mobile backhaul. We have uh, stores that, that can't get mobile service. So when you, when you look at how you roll this out, it's complex, it's hard because every store is unique, every environment's unique, every geography's unique, we've got different vendors supporting um, 
our environments across the world, and, and that makes it hard. That's, that's not an easy problem. Okay, so we put together these uh, design principles for rolling out IoT. It served us very well, right? And this is partly we had about, there are about 12 on the sheet, and we'll talk through each one of these. When we started, we had about five. And guess what happens? Every time we had a problem, we added one more. And we are at 12, we are deploying. Hopefully, we won't have one more. OK? So first one is adaptability. Several things to consider under adaptability. First one is you are connecting this complex system to a pieces of equipment that are commoditized. I'm, connect I'm connecting this to blenders, refrigerators, to coffee machines. And some of these machines have been there in our stores for the last seven years. OK. Guess what microprocessor is in our blender? Eight years old. It's probably 8-bit microprocessor, right? I had to interface with an 8-piece microprocessor. And the first equipment with the operating system that we are deploying is this year. So everything passed was what you guys consider, a, or guys and gals consider a primitive device. And that is very important for us. Yeah, when you talk about the technologies too, uh, and the type of protocols being used, if you look at the IoT landscape, there are a dozen different networking protocols that are being used from Zigbee to Wi-Fi to Bluetooth, et cetera. Um, and part of what we're trying to do is make sure that we have an open platform. So something we can develop against, something we can give to our vendors, uh, our equipment manufacturers, our, uh, our installers, anybody that's, that's in this space, we want to try to leverage enough open technology to be, uh, to be able to integrate this successfully and keep ourselves out of that vendor lock solution where uh, we can't plug in somebody's latest internet you know, connected device into our stores because uh, they don't play well with others. The second, the third most important criteria we had was uh, we didn't want anyone in the stores to think about IoT. We want it to be real plug and play. Because here's how our system works, right? You plug in a module, it has to talk to our machine, then it has to get onto our Wi Fi network in the store, come all the way to our servers here, right? And then the whole thing has to work like a charm. So if you see, there are four lights on our module that you see in our store and all the four lights have to light up. And we have 350,000 partners. We don't want to train 350,000 partners on networking and how it connects to the internet because they are very busy serving their customers, right? Their job is to serve their customers and give them the most awesome experience there is, right? So we designed a system end to end so that you take a module, you plug it into the machine, it'll boot up, it'll send data, it'll get recipes. And if you don't see the three lights on, somebody will call you when the three lights are not on. And uh, if the module is broken, we can take it and send it to recycling and plug a next module in, and here we go. Right? And as of today, the Spear and Azure system is the only system that provides us that amount of interoperability. Yeah, we also talk about, you know, as technology changes again in this space, it is, there's rapid evolution uh, on the type of technologies and all. We're trying to make sure that we're adaptable to those. So not, not deciding on technology suites that are going to lock us in uh, to a particular vendor or a particular you know, technology that goes out of space. Um, that's something we've worked a lot with Microsoft on as far as the security side, what we're trying to do, because we want this thing to scale to you know, 30,000 stores. We want this to be able to run in multiple geographies. Um, and, and it's got to be something that's maintainable and operatable uh, for us for however long the equipment stays around, which is typically not a year or two, right? It's seven or eight, nine, 10 years that we run some of this equipment. We have to have something that maintains across that. Uh, security? Security, yeah, security is kind of a big thing, right? Um, that was one of, the th one of the things about the Microsoft Sphere that was so interesting to us is they had developed that security model uh, from the OS, from the hardware down uh, through the stack, and, and that enables us to have uh, much greater confidence that when we deploy these, um, we're not opening up 10 times 30,000 store endpoints that somebody could use in some malicious fashion. So 
the security model that, that Microsoft has in their sphere um, is very powerful to us. Um, and that's made our security team very happy and it makes my job a little bit easier. Um, and so while we're looking at this, then that allows us then to take a look at the security protocols up and down the stack. Um, and and uh, uh, it's, again, it's super important this data is important to us. Uh, those endpoints are important to us to, to make sure that we uh, enable security to run effectively across the universe. Reliability. Uh, we work, uh, we work uh, about 12 hours a day, and we, our coffee equipment is producing a lot of beverages in a day. Ovens are heating a lot of sandwiches. We can't have our module or any of our connectivity fail, right? Plus, a store environment is a very, very rugged environment. Although you look at a great experience in the front of bar, when you're sitting in the cafe, it is great. In the back, it is a production engine, right? You have coffee grounds, you have water, you have humidity, you have all kinds of uh, things. Plus, we have operators, we have partners who have come with a variety of skill sets, right? So, one of the things we tested out is we tested out for how rugged it is, how reliable it is. Does the connection stay up? Does it give us good data? Can it, you know, can it withstand a water splash? And all these are very important for us, right? Because they're deploying it at a lot of cost. The biggest thing that Starbucks looks at is scalability, okay? And why scalability is important for Starbucks is when we scale up and we enable IoT or we deploy a machine, we don't do it country by country or area by area. When we deploy the espresso machine that you see in our booth, when we say we are deploying espresso machines, we are, uh, we are deploying it in Kent, Washington. We are deploying it in Seoul, South Korea. We are deploying it in Tokyo. We are also deploying it in Peru. Okay, so once we say a technology is ready to roll out, our operations team is deploying all over the world. So at, that, at this instant, we have to be ready to enable IoT connectivity in all these countries, right? 85 countries in all the 30,000 stores, right? We can't say that we are not ready yet for China because the port is different. We have to be ready for China too, Korea too, right? <clears throat> the other thing that is important is we also had to provide a simple interface because we are dealing with 200 suppliers, a range of technologies. The other big uh, constraint we have is Technology on an overall scale, its life cycle is about two to three years. Whereas our equipment life cycle is seven to 10 years. We have to match up both, right? And so we have to deal with an entire spectrum of suppliers. And we have come up with a system in partnership with Microsoft so that we can have a unique, a very simple interface that is put as part of a purchase order with every piece of equipment that goes out. So that suppliers can easily understand and connect with our IoT platform. Yeah, and then lastly, I think just the low cost of ownership. When we look at operationalization of, of, uh, of an endeavor that Starbucks has, if we add 10 new devices and that costs us 10x to, to operationally maintain that, both from a data perspective and everything else, that obviously doesn't scale out uh, from a business standpoint. And so everything we've tried to do from data acquisition, data gathering, data storage, uh, analytics, has all been around uh, you know, trying to make sure that we have a low cost associated to that, whether it's IoT through our supply chain, IoT through the retail stores, IoT through our roasting plants, um, we've got efforts in all of those, and so making sure that we maintain that opera operational cost at a low factor is really important to us. So, that is my last slide. So, what I suggest you do is go try the coffee in our booth, taste the coffee here, try the coffee in our booth, and our Starbucks technology partners and our engineering partners will be there throughout the next two days. You can ask a lot of questions and most of them have been involved in the deployment of, this, uh, of, the, of the IoT platform. So they can answer a lot of on the ground uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you.